Hi, my name is Dr. Karen Acker. I'm a pediatric infectious diseases specialist and hospital epidemiologist at New York Presbyterian Kamansky Children's Hospital. Hi, my name is Dr. Melissa Stockwell. I'm the chief of the Division of Child and Adolescent Health at New York Presbyterian Morgan Stanley Children's Hospital and Columbia University Irving Medical Center. So I'm gonna start us off. So probably the thing that's first and foremost on most parents' minds is, is the vaccine effective for their five to 11 year old? The vaccine is very effective for children in this age group. When they studied the vaccine in the five to 11 year age group, they found that it was as effective as the 16 to 25 year age group. They found that it was 90.7% efficacious in preventing infections and that children had as good of antibody responses as the older age groups. That is good news. Yeah. That's the first big question. And the next big one we know is, are there side effects? And is this vaccine safe for kids in this age group? So first and foremost, the COVID vaccine is safe for children five to 11 years old. And the good news is that the side effects are really similar to what we saw in adolescents and in adults. In fact, in many cases, those side effects were less. So for example, there was less pain at the injection site and that's good news for kids who really are not fans of getting shots. In addition, we often look at symptoms that we call systemic symptoms, and those are things like fever, headache, tiredness, or muscle aches. And all of those were actually less in the trials in kids who were five to 11 years old. The only thing that we saw in the trials that was more was uh, redness at the injection site and swelling. But that's really common after vaccines that we give all the time and we know how to take care of it and it's really not a big deal. So one thing that parents may have heard about and might be concerned about is myocarditis. Can you explain a little bit about what that is? Myocarditis is inflammation of the heart muscle. This was a very rare side effect that we initially saw in adolescent males after they received the second dose of the vaccine. We saw that this was very rare and also quite mild. They did very well with supportive care. Uh, fortunately, in the five to 11 age group trials, we didn't see any cases of myocarditis. And interestingly enough, they found that the infection that causes COVID-19 is actually more likely to give you myocarditis, including teenagers. The fact that we were able to pick up such a rare side effect really highlights the scrutiny that this vaccine is getting. So Dr. Sackwell, I know you're an expert at following long-term effects of vaccines. So what can you tell us about the potential long-term effects of this vaccine? So when we look at vaccines over time, really the side effects that we see are in the first six weeks or 42 days after vaccination. And millions and millions of people have gotten these vaccines, and we haven't seen any long-term side effects. And so we don't really expect to see any in children who are five to 11 years either. Also, there are a lot of eyes on, these vac on this vaccine, and so really people should feel very reassured. So let's move on to some of the logistics. So how is this dose different than for adolescents or adults? And is it based on age or by weight? So first thing, the dose of the vaccine is based on age and not the weight. When they came up with the initial dosing regimen, they came up with 30 micrograms for adults, and that same dose was used for 12 years and older. When determining the dose for the younger age group, they found that really the optimal dose was 10 micrograms, or one third of that adult dose. That was shown to mount as robust as an immune response, and with the goal of hopefully minimizing side effects. So Dr. Sackwell, when would you consider a child to be fully vaccinated? And also, do you anticipate that children will need to get boosters at some point? So for any COVID vaccine, we consider someone to be fully protected or immunized two weeks after their last dose. And so in this case, it's a two-dose vaccine. And so two weeks after that second dose, we would consider a child to be fully protected. We don't know yet whether children are going to need boosters or not. For the current data that we have, we're actually not recommending boosters for those who are under 18 years of age. Um, but we'll watch this over time. So are there any children who are in the right age who shouldn't get vaccinated? Fortunately, there are very few contraindications um, to get the vaccine, meaning reasons that you shouldn't get it. Really the primary reason is um, if you've received the vaccine, one dose of the vaccine already and experienced a severe adverse reaction, such as anaphylaxis, then it's recommended not to get that subsequent dose of the vaccine. So Dr. Sackwell, I think the biggest question is, why is it so important that children get vaccinated at this time? So first and foremost, it's important that children get vaccinated to protect themselves and protect their health. 
But there's also other benefits from getting more children vaccinated. First, it's a way to protect the whole family. We also know there are benefits to our community, and we talk a lot about community immunity. And what that means is that the more people we can get vaccinated, the better chance we have of having COVID really just either go away or just become you know, one of those um, viruses that, that we don't see that often. Children under 18 make up almost a quarter of the U.S. population. Um, so it's really important that they be vaccinated. And if we can get everybody vaccinated, then we can return more to a new normal. And that's really what we need for children. We know that children have not been spared by the COVID-19 pandemic. And we know that children can also get severely sick from COVID-19 infection. We know that even if they're not infected, they have been affected by this pandemic. So I strongly urge um, every child that is eligible to get vaccinated so that you can know that you're doing everything you can to protect your child. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully we've answered some of your questions. If you have more, please speak to your child's primary care provider so you can feel reassured. And if you want more information, please visit us at nyp.org pediatrics.